I decided last night that I was going to watch AEW Dynamite. I said, it's been a little while since I've watched an entire episode from beginning to end. Probably even longer since I've done a review. Let me come back and see what's up, right? Why not? I'll do that from time to time. And oh my god. This was dog shit. Absolute dog shit. Anybody that refers to this as anything other than a suck, crap, dog shit, or worse show is completely pandering to their AEW bias. This was god awful. And to make it even worse, like I didn't even realize it like it really didn't dawn on me at first, in part because of how shitty this show was this week, that this was the last dynamite before AEW Revolution on Sunday. If you tuned in watching this show thinking you were going to get a lot of great hype for the pay-per-view on Sunday, <laughs> you were sadly fucking disappointed. This was unbelievably bad. A truly painful watch. This is about as painful of a watch that I had Wednesday night in two hours as you would typically get for a three-hour episode of Raw. It was that bad. Like, you start off with Big Bill versus Orange Cassidy. Oh, look, Big Cass decided to give a shit. And he works out now, and he actually, you know, has a decent physique, and he looks a little more athletic. He's a giant. Orange Cassidy is a comic relief shrimp. So, of course, if you're trying to make money, you would either have Big Bill win, or Big Bill get disqualified because he takes fucking Orange Cassidy out, you know, like maybe when you do the table spot outside, clearly in view of the ref, and you just let it fucking go. But no! You gotta have Orange Cassidy pin Big Bill clean, one, two, three, in the middle of a goddamn ring. And to any of you that are gonna sit there and say, well, David Goliath, David Goliath, here's the difference, dumb dicks. It's not like David went up there and said, put him on. Put him up. I'm going to whip your gigantic ass. No, he frickin' threw with the slingshot thing and goddamn hit Goliath in the head with a rock and killed him. That's not the goddamn same. And if you say, well, the big guy doesn't always have to win, I don't disagree with that. The problem is, if you want to use the David and Goliath analogy, if David always beats Goliath clean which is what Tony Khan seems to fucking be obsessed with doing, then guess what? It doesn't help your Goliath, and it doesn't help your David either. It helps nobody, which is kind of a pattern in AEW Khan world. The fucking ladder match for the title shot was god-awful. I know a lot of people are going to talk about the ladder spot with Hobbs, and having three officials having to hold up the broken frickin' ladder. Look, in the context of how shitty this show was, I understand how bad of an optic that was. It does look stupid. Admit, it looks stupid. I don't want to hear any fucking WWE comparison. I don't want to hear anything else. It just optically looks stupid. But it really doesn't bother me. I understand in the moment the decision they made. Who gives a fuck? I can't imagine looking at this stupid-ass match, even though you're in San Francisco and Hobbs won, and it's like, hey, it's a great moment. So that way he can either eventually job out to Samoa Joe or Wardlow next week. Speaking of people that have absolutely no heat anymore, Wardlow, this guy went from being arguably the most over guy in the goddamn company to barely even fucking mattering anymore. The beef with this freaking ladder match is that guys were far more concerned with doing stupid-ass spots off the ropes, like running the ropes, whatever the fuck that guy's name was, the guys jumping off the ladder like Sammy Guevara and so sh some shit. They're more concerned with doing the spots to pop the crowd than they are with actually trying to win the goddamn match. Where the fuck is the match psychology? The wrestling psychology here. The goddamn storytelling. There is none, because of no of course there's none, because we're talking about fucking AEW here. And that was dog shit. I care less about the ref stuff, as optically bad as it might have looked. I'm more worried about just how stupid the fucking match was. 
Great, Chris Jericho is going to let Peter Avalon get a couple minutes of shit in, and then he's going to knock him out with one blow. One, two, three. So that way Ricky Starks can come out and make the save until he gets his ass whooped by Chris Jericho. Look at Ricky Starks. Here's somebody that's got some buzz behind him. Here's somebody that's very interesting. So let's pull him into the vortex of the Jericho Sucker Society, and that way you take away all his goddamn momentum. Next, the Christian Cage promo, believe it or not, was actually a highlight. Christian Cage with the live microphone was a highlight of the show. It was actually really, really good. And then for some reason they went to this Jungle Jack fucking video with a fucking fake tear and it's the grave and it's got Christian Cage's name on it. This is a fucking stupid. If his daddy was still alive, he'd keel over and die again. Horrible. No, let me not say that. My apologies to Luke Perry. If he was alive, he would make sure that he's at the pay-per-view and he'd double-cross his fucking stupid son and he'd align with Christian Cage. That's what he'd do. But you had this really good Christian Cage promo ruined by this squirrely-ass, weird-ass fucking video vignette. Matt Hardy taking on Hook for the FTW title. Why? Are these guys working the pay-per-view? Does that have anything to do with the pay-per-view? So who fucking cares? Next. Oh my god, can you imagine? Tony Storm apparently has turned heel. It sounds fucking stupid because it is fucking stupid. You've got people trying to pretend that Sarai is actually really good, which is also really fucking stupid. But mo worst of all, they pretend that Rio is actually really good, which is the stupidest thing of all. Yet another match where Rio throws a bunch of anemic, pathetic ass looking offense, and of course she gets the one, two, three. More garbage. Stupid. The Casino Tag Team Battle Royal. Oh my god. This match would not fucking end. It went on and on and on and on and on and on. All of this so that way the fourth team or the team that wins can be the fourth team in the tag match at fucking Revolution. And one of those four teams apparently as I'm finding out watching that show last night was the fucking Memphis Midcard Pizza Clock. Don't do it, AEW. Don't you dare do it. I'm warning you. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But this fucking battle royal is also that way Dan Housen and Orange Cassidy can win and they're going to be the fourth team. Yeah, I mean, why would you want to put FDR in that spot, right? God forbid. Like... This show was dog shit. Pretty much everything the first hour and 50 minutes was dog shit. The only thing that saved this show this week was the last 10 minutes and the stuff involving MJF and Daniel Bryan. Some of you are probably going to point to earlier the promo from Moxley and the response by Hangman Page. Whatever, who gives a shit? Next. Well, Moxley's bleeding again. Big fucking surprise. Page, it's okay, but it's nothing special. But this shit here with MJF and Brian Danielson, that was freaking special. Like, Brian Danielson on fucking point. Like, if you had had more of stuff like this on this show, it could have been a really exciting go home show to lead into Revolution. And instead, it was loud, largely a loud, wet queef that was culminated by a great fucking orgasm. You figure out the tie in there. It doesn't even fucking matter at this point. Because it didn't make sense. Because almost nothing on this goddamn show made any sense. I've seen AEW do better. I've seen AEW do much, much better than this steaming, stinking pile of garbage. And then you got people on Twitter when they're pointing out how shitty the ref spot looks. You got the freaking ref coming on. The fuck are you doing? Who gives a shit? And again, even for the fans that are focusing on that, ding dong dumb bitch, you're focusing on the wrong frickin' thing! God. Well, I'm sure Meltzer thought this show was fucking great. And you saw the ratings for this show this week sucked in comparison to the previous week. Let me guess, there's gonna be an NBA excuse. There's always a fucking excuse. No, this show's viewership sucked because this show sucked. It got the viewership and rating it fucking deserved. Dog shit. 
The whole job of this show should have been to try and sell me somebody who's barely watched over the past few months. Get, sell me on the idea and concept of paying for the pay-per-view Sunday. And as it stands right now, I really don't know if I'm going to fucking do that. And certainly, outside of MJF versus Brian Danielson, that is the only thing that I give two flying flip fucks about come Sunday night. Maybe, just maybe, you convinced me to buy the pay-per-view. And those they say, well, you buy it any fucking ways, would I? As little as I care about wrestling right now, I wouldn't be so fucking cocksure about that. Maybe just enough interest there with MJF and Danielson that I might watch it. But other than that, this show sucked. And if it's any indication of what we're going to see at the pay-per-view on Sunday, that's going to suck too.